Week of prayer reading for Monday, titled, No Other Book Like This, The Uniqueness of the Bible. In 1800, a 15-year-old Welsh girl named Mary Jones walked barefoot 26 miles, or 42 kilometres, through the rugged terrain of North Wales to buy a Welsh Bible. Mary had such a strong desire to own her own Bible in her own language that she worked hard and saved every cent she earned for six years. Then, she had to trek for a long distance to buy it. Her inspirational story led to establishing Bible societies that print and distribute Bibles across the world. Today, you and I live in a very different world than Mary Jones, but we still consider the Bible to be a unique book. Of course, all religions have their holy writings and consider them special. But why do we believe the Bible is unique? The Bible as God's Revelation Throughout the centuries, people have identified three sources of knowledge, mind, experience, and God's revelation. The human mind can be a source of amazing discoveries that make our lives easier and more humanity forward. People, through their personal experiences, can broaden their perspectives on life and society and improve the quality of their own life and of humanity. Yet though the human mind and experience are useful tools for understanding the world around us, Because of the effects on sin, they are insufficient as sources to grasp ultimate realities. We did not create ourselves, so we cannot create the ultimate meaning of things. We need God's revelation. Deuteronomy chapter 29 verse 29. Where there is love, where there is relationship, there are words. Therefore, God speaks. That's why ancient Israel treasured and loved God's book. The Apostle Paul wrote a classic statement on this. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. In other words, the Bible carries God's authority because it has been uniquely inspired, breathed out by God. The Bible is not just a history book, but contains powerful truths which underwrite the work of the Holy Spirit and can help bring us spiritual maturity. 2 Timothy chapter 3 shows how the Holy Spirit uses the Bible in four specific directions. The scriptures give us the basic elements of our faith, teachings and doctrine. But when we have broken or missed God's principles, it brings retrification rebuking, or reproof. That's why it is important to read the Bible in such a way that we hear even those things that we do not want to hear. It is easy to read the Bible as a confirmation of what we have always believed, but when the scriptures are properly read, the Holy Spirit can administer to our soul rebuke and correction, truths that change our thinking and behavior, or exhortation. Finally, the Bible shows us how to maintain God's principles for living, instructions for righteousness, or training. The Bible has a divine human character. As already mentioned, the message of the Bible comes from God, but by necessity it is expressed by humans with words and thoughts reflecting the place and time of their writing. Different writings clearly reflect the personality of the author. Both these aspects, divine and human, are equally important and must be kept in balance. They need to be distinguished, but they cannot be separated. Because the Bible is God's word, it has eternal meaning. It is addressed to all humanity. It is relevant for every person in every age, place, and culture. That's why we need to listen to what the Bible says and obey what it advises. The human aspect is given by the fact that it is written in a certain time and place in the language of certain people. For example, the Old Testament is in Hebrew and Aramaic, whereas the New Testament is written in Greek. Because of this, to a certain extent, scripture reflects the thinking of the authors. Literary genre, style, and vocabulary are different in different parts of the Bible. Some writers even use sources that they themselves didn't write. Every book of the Bible has therefore a certain specific style. Because there are no degrees of inspiration insinuating that some parts are inspired more and others less, we talk about the dynamic inspiration rather than verbal or literal dictation. 
Once we realize that the divine and human aspects are inseparable, we will take these two aspects into account in our study and interpretation. The Bible needs to be studied historically and grammatically because the document was written in a certain historical time by a certain author. But we cannot remain just at that level because the Bible is more than just history. It is God's timeless revelation that addresses every human being until the end of time. That's the divine aspect of the Bible. The Bible, with its God-given truths expressed in the language of men, presents a union of the divine and the human. Such a union existed in the nature of Christ, who was the Son of God and the Son of Man. Thus it is true of the Bible, as it was of Christ, that the Word was made of flesh and dwelt among us. Our story is part of God's story. 70% of the Old Testament and 60% of the New Testament came in a narrative form. God chose the story because it has the power to inspire people and carry the meaning better than anything else. This provides a unified focus for 40 scripture writers. The ultimate problem and the ultimate solution are the same for all writers. And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. Luke chapter 24, verse 27. The word all is important here. Jesus did not talk about a few messianic prophetic predictions. What Jesus is saying is now you get the whole story. Now you understand it in a way that no one did before. Now you see what it means, what God has been up to. Then the Bible story continues with its fulfillment as expressed through the new community, church until the day of the Lord and the new creation and eradication of sin. The only way to redeem a broken story is to embed it in a bigger story. When you read the Bible, you can see your temptations, your fall, your coming out of Egypt, your crossing of Jordan, your wandering of the wilderness, your exile. Jesus opens your eyes and cleanses you. The Bible becomes a living word in your own experience. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. God's word accomplishes the creation of life, the conviction of sin, the achievement of hope, brings power in your weakness, provides guidance in your darkness. It becomes the lamp to your feet, the light to your path. Psalms chapter 119 verse 105. It is the story that gives your personal story a new meaning. Therefore, you can be a woman, you can be a man of the book. We can and need to be people of the book. Questions for reflection. What makes the Bible different from other holy books? Have you been able to identify with a specific biblical character in your spiritual experience? Monday's reading was written by Daniel Duda, who is the president of the Trans-European Division of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. This was read to you by Zachary Sellers, editor of audio products at Adventist Media in the South Pacific Division.